Pasa. Here we are, here we are. Another love, <laughs> another favorite, another Bermuda by Cinematic. <laughs> what a lovely trailer. Good to be back, Rafa. It's been a while, no? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. We, 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 well, we, did, we did one last month, but uh, you were traveling from Mexico to another sunny location. And, and I think we, we did as well when in, in January, didn't we? Or in December? In, I think in, in November for the Brazilian one, we I remember uh, zooming in from Guanajuato, from the house in Guanajuato. And that's my last memory of entering in the Bermuda. Ah, so nice to see Alan. Alan, Hola. adios. Hola, Alan. Hello. Okay, guys. So where are you? You're in Cinematic, Cinematic Bermudes. Cinematic is a platform that has been defending independent cinematic, independent Ibero-American cinema in Scotland and beyond for the last undisclosed number of years. <laughs> there are proofs that there, there are things that say ten, that ten, we, ten plus. we were up and running in 2008, which that will make it... Uh, oof. That's about 12, 13, 12? 14. Gosh. 14, 12. 14. I was using the calculator, so 14. <laughs> it's 14 years. So yes, um, 14 years defending independent American cinema in Scotland, beyond. Not so many years, but a few that we do this uh, alternative love, different love, otro amor program in February, trying to make a more comprehensive, a more inclusive uh, Valentine celebration. And shouldn't say this myself, but... To okay. celebrate love every day, you know? <laughs> I shouldn't say this myself, but one of the most beautiful programs at Best Cinema we have shown in quite a while. I uh, hate to agree with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely following you, Travis. Oh, Caroline. Caroline. Oh. So, yeah, end, end of travels. Back here, kind of settling in Catalonia, new base. And, and, you know, join in on Sundays and every time we can uh, cinematic, because it's probably the only space. Um, we were, we were um, not talking yesterday about how the night went in Edinburgh, but, you know, it feels like, like a ghost, no? Like it, it's just all the work of getting the rights and the films is always paid off when you're in the room with, with Alan, with Caroline, with all the audience, you know, hearing the laughs, the silence, the uncomfortable silences. Uh, you know, that's what pays off. And and every time um, you do one, no, I, I like to hear the, the feelings. How was it? Someone crying, something, someone laughing. How was it? Well, a very, very interesting program. I mean, the, you, you know, I don't know if you know the were um, heavy storm forecast for Edimara, which yeah. didn't, didn't, you materialize, her, yeah. didn't, didn't materialize as bad as people expected. So it was quite good. Uh, Glasgow, it was uh, the previous Saturday, it was a uh, sold out and they, uh, the restrictions are now being lifted. So lots of people, lots of different uh, groups, great acceptance, great uh, welcome to the program. Uh, they enjoy it so much. And Edinburgh, it was uh, as well very well attended, I mean, equally in numbers uh, uh, as Glasgow. But yes, with, with this forecast, we, 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 we have a bigger venue than him. <laughs> it wasn't so loud. It mm -hmm. was such a good night, such a good night, such a cold night. And Emotional as well, I've been told, no? 
It was yeah. emotional at times. Yes, we talk about that, but I made a promise on Friday at all some at some balls a big episcopal charge that I will hire an industrial heater for the next event which will be <laughs> in March. And, and I, I, I do it public now, so it's, it's, there's no way back. We're going to have one of those cannon heaters with a bottle of gas because the, the old town in Edinburgh and these lovely stone buildings. Can imagine. When the heater <laughs> doesn't work. When the Can heater imagine. Is, it was experience. It was experience, really. I so we, 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 uh, Raf, we, I don't know if, if Nicolás will be in, in Barcelona or in Malaga or in Mexico, but we're dialing in today with Mexico, Buenos Aires, and supposedly Madrid or, Valen or Valencia for Borja, no? We're going to travel yeah. to we those places. Gutierrez, the, the, the director of Serranilla, coming first. Then we have Borja Soler, Mindanao, and we close with Maria Silvia Esteve, which is Silvia Esteve in reality, no? Or uh, Alaina. Director of Criatura, one of the films I think you were mentioning, Rice, um, the, the, the strongest emotions, the, really the, the uh, people who had to leave the room because they couldn't uh, get into them too, 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 too deep. Mm -hmm. I can see Nicolás is already uh, with us uh, in the waiting room and it's not really, we shouldn't let him wait too long. What do you think? Yeah, no, if he's here, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we cut the intros, people probably are tired of our intros and we get straight into the main course or into the yeah into okay the juice welcome nicolás gutierrez hola nicolás hola qué tal hi how Bien, are bienvenido. you welcome great great good good morning and thank you for inviting me and the short film to to the program absolutely we weren't sure if, if you know where will you be dialing in from today you may you in mexico I'm in Mexico City. Yeah, it's a bit early for me. It's like 6 a.m., but uh, wow. I'll try and keep a, a midday conversation. Uh. <laughs> we can take it slow if yeah. you want and then pick up halfway through. <laughs> no, but, uh, how are you? And we, how how, how, um, how it's been the, the program and everything? But very good, well, fantastic. Uh, we were saying... Um, I mean, we program short films every month, so it's, it's difficult to say, but this program as a, as a whole is one of the strongest, I think, we, we have offered. And your, your film, Serranilla, we, we place it at the end of the program, so to close it. Mm. There was kind of a increchendo of emotions. There was this, this kind of amazing short film, Mindanao, by Borja Soler. And then we finish with Agustina, Agustina, her optimism, her yeah. sign of, of love forever. No? Tenderness <laughs> and with Agustina singing, no? It's that beautiful it's uh, thing that you do with the film that at times we see black, but hear sounds. Yeah. And it was like a very nice way to fade out and, and call it a night. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, and... Um... I'm very happy that the the film could get uh, so far, so far away from uh, Guanajuato. Um, and yes, um, Agustina, um, uh, she 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 sings. She she knew some other songs, and we recorded other other ones. But uh, I I ended up. Um, Picking this one, uh, selecting this one, because yeah, it has this like uh, quality that could end the film and could. Uh, I mean, I mean the 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 lyrics of uh, of the song, which is a folk traditional Mexican song, are are very uh, brutal <laughs> uh, in what they are saying, um, which I think uh, accounts from for like what a woman like Agustina has lived no, in a rural place where sometimes for a woman uh, love uh, could be a, a very harsh thing to, to live, no? like uh, in these traditional schemes of, uh, of rural relations where the man is really the, the powerful one and makes the decisions. But... Uh, it was uh, really surprised. I was really surprised when I met Agustina because she 
she definitely was the one uh, who who was empowered no uh, through her relations <laughs> yes. absolutely uh, nicolas like there are many reasons why we love this film but obviously uh, when you pick like documentaries with such a strong subject no and and, and this life and this experience it was like man we need to you know bring her story we need to share it here in the in the north sea <laughs> Uh, from the mountains of Guanajuato to, to the North Sea. And well, <coughs> go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was I was going to ask, um, um, like, uh, what 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 kind of um, of audience did the program in this case had? Uh, uh, yeah, well, the, the the audience very diverse and. Edinburgh and Glasgow are only half an hour distance by car, but they, they, they may be in different galaxies altogether. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different reality altogether. And we had such a diverse um, audience. We were on purpose a track, a time to attract collectives that don't feel represented in the official line of some Valentine, uh, Valentine celebrations. And, and I, I introduced the film, the, the program as that, no, as a This is the, the program that brings all the love that maybe is not the standard one in the romantic films. The love across gender, obviously, the love of uh, across continents, across uh, oceans, across so many different preconceived uh, topics. Like, for example, loving, finding the, the generosity to love somebody who doesn't deserve it or may not deserve it or clean those bits that make them deservable of love so you can love him or love her yeah. but yours i remember to introduce it as the love beyond age and love yeah. beyond, look, how can it's possible to love more than one person and everybody was saying like mm, i can see and if one of them is not alive anymore <laughs> yeah. I, mean, so i would like to ask you about that how how what a love story you put in your film and where did that come from Um, it's uh, when when I heard that the program was going to be around uh, love, uh, I was really uh, in in like well not surprised because I mean the short film is is about Agustina and and her 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 yeah her love throughout time throughout all of her years, um, but. Uh, Yeah, it, it it makes total sense to have this short film on a on a love uh, program. Um, well, first of all, I I think Agustina has like this kind of, um, and at least what what I learned from her is that uh, she's been through several uh, love stories. No, each one of them. Uh, Um, seen from the present uh, seem really um, uh, like a repetition. Uh, like if it was the same guy three times or the same same love three times, but every time she she tried a different kind of loving. Uh, first, maybe uh, she was like in a in a loving with a lot of hope. Uh, maybe with, with her first love. Uh, then um, every time uh, the love uh, abandoned her, no, or 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 changed direction. And with uh, uh, his his current affair, uh, Dionisio, which he appears on the film, uh, it seems as if it is a, a non conditional love, uh, like. She she really doesn't uh, care if what Don Dionisio does, no. Like uh, Dionisio may be in a bad mood, but she still loves him the same. Or she, or I mean, he's like she's like, um, and it's really hard, no, what she says about uh, Dionisio about. Um, his uh, state of being in, in his old age and his uh, all, all the traumas that he has. Uh, but uh, as I said, I think she she repeats 
her kind of loving again and this time it's like a loving an unconditional one no um i don't know i uh, yeah. i think it's it, it it can be seen as uh as one of the prototypical uh things a woman in rural mexico uh do which is uh, love uh, unconditionally her sons her daughters her husbands um even if uh, life has has been tough no uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it has this like the relationship with dionysio one of the things it was interesting is not you know when we do these programs we don't like only like young romance uh, foolish love you know just platonic love it's like we, we want to show the full 360 experience of you know you know loving and loving through the years or, 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 or you know or destroying love and in this case it was this kind of the relationship with Dionysio it was there was this kind of darling companion element of you know we want to enjoy the last years of our lives together no matter what sure you know? yeah and and I mean, it's hard to say this, but I think also like the love of Agustina might be like um, over, over even um, romanticized. Yeah, yeah over it, it's, it's. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's the most romantic kind of love, but she, she, she's she's also with Dionysio because um, because of him, no, not only because of her, uh, because mm -hmm. she knows that if if he wouldn't be uh, if she wouldn't be there, uh, probably Dionysio would be alone, no. Mm -hmm. But I I know that if Dionysio wouldn't be there, Agustina would be would be happy still, no. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, for us it was interesting because it opens a lot of doors about caring, about yeah. belonging, and about, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally. Um, yeah. Nicolás, um, I, I wanted to ask you about, you know, a couple of, you know, uh, uh, things about about the film. But one is, you know, taking from the title is this journey that you do that I think you've done personally as well. There is this journey of blending... Mexico and Spain, in a way, Saranilla, the title, invokes us to, you know, to a subgenre of literature in the like, 15th century or 16th century in Spain that was typical, no? all these love stories in the mountains of Andalusia and these yeah. pastoras, these shepherds. Um, but then you take this, this kind of genre, almost this lyrical uh, genre, to the mountains, to the Sierra of Guanajuato, um, so I don't know if you could tell us a bit about this sure. blending or these journeys. I I um, um like for the last, I think it took me like two or three years. I was uh, thinking like I, I I wanted to to um, to do a film on uh, with a with a shepherd. No, uh, I didn't knew what to do or. It was just a curiosity and impulse. I said I, I want to do a, a portrait of a, of a shepherd, no, and I wanted to to do a portrait like if it was maybe a painting, no. I would love to do like uh, I don't paint, but but uh, as I as I do film, well, I I said I want to do a a, a portrait, and if it was a painting, I I, I imagine it like in a in a um, rural, beautiful, very classic uh, Spanish, maybe uh, imaginary, uh, and um, I I traveled to some places around in Mexico, uh, like uh, where people, uh, well, they have their their sheep or, or cows or whatever. I met other shepherds before meeting uh, Agustina. And everything involves a process because you are not only imagining this character, you have to portray a real person. No? So this process uh, is not as going to a place and taking a picture like a tourist. No? Uh, it involves uh, also uh, getting to know the, the character, getting to know, talking and 
making not just a, a, a picture of them, but doing a collaboration in some sort of way, no? Uh, uh, yes, in some sort of way. So I I met uh, some other shepherds, but uh, in the end, uh, there was uh, Agustina, who lives uh, nearby uh, an aunt of mine, uh, and they are friends from for they've been friends for I think for six or seven years now, and so uh, there was already this trust, no, that where where uh, Agustina could maybe open herself, which I think it was not a problem because she's very extroverted and she would like quickly uh, talk with me and ask me, okay, but what do you want to do and. And uh, she was very participative in, in that sort of way. Uh, she suggested like the song. She said like, well, maybe I can sing uh, something. Uh, and I said, yeah, it's perfect. I, I think it would go with this lyrical uh, portrait of, of you. And um, then I, when, while I was uh, like developing the ideas and the, the, pro the project, I start reading about uh, lit literature, about shepherds, no, all kind of it, uh, and I arrived to this little genre you mentioned, which gives title to the to the short film, which is the Serranillas, which I found very uh, attractive because it is not the typical tale of a um, of a guy or a shepherd, a male shepherd who finds. Uh, a woman and fantasize about this meeting in the in the vast in a vast rural uh, place uh, because they, they're very lonely people shepherds obviously you know uh, so I mean they 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 um, they are very a long time in the in the wild and I I guess this. This also gives you a lot of time to think and to imagine what you desire, no? Uh, but in the Serranillas, the the twist is that uh, instead of being uh, a male perspective, uh, well, it is in like eighty percent of the poems that I've read because there are a lot of Serranillas. It is the male perspective, but it is about a uh, meeting with a very powerful uh, woman figure uh, most of the times and the and the minority was uh, some serranillas that had a woman as the protagonist you know, and and as their perspective of their the the encounter in a rural place a love encounter in a rural place you no know? <laughs> so I said, uh, that's great. I haven't heard of anything like this, no? A, a classic tale with a woman's perspective uh, that involves uh, a love encounter in in the in the wild, no? In in the in in, in the rural, in the in the in this place that I imagine for the portrait, no? So I and. I, I found the title before meeting uh, Agustina. Like the title Beceranilla. was uh, <clears throat> the title was the my compass. Anchor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the compass, compass. The compass. Yeah. So uh, when I found Agustina, it was like okay, it's perfect. No, it's it fits the the idea that I was developing. No, and <laughs> as I said in the beginning of the question the answer uh, it is all about a process no and a quest and you every project has its has, has its um, stops no like in the road and uh, you start uh, the the pro the project and you start uh, like uh, defining which ideas are gonna be the uh, the ones that reach the audience no um, and so yes, Serranilla was the title was found before the the character and the, the environment. We we love this this for, kind of, this this small game, no? This. For for European ignorance like us, uh, you know, Mexico is always uh, this kind of country of contrasts and and that, and also this is kind of the respect, devotion, attention to the 
to the world of, of the dead. No, and, and, and Agustina is in love with a, with a live person, but he's also in love with a dead one. And in, in a way, it could be almost selfish. Saying, well, I can, I'm going to get, just in case, I'm going to put a candle in this. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, for, I forgot also <coughs> that, part, but that part of your question. Uh, and then, well, Mexico and Spain, well, they share... Uh, I don't know if share is a word, but uh, there's been, obviously, you couldn't uh, think of Mexico today if uh, what happened 500 years ago with Spain here uh, and throughout other 300 uh, hadn't been, no, hadn't happened. So a lot of, you know, rural and Mexican culture is, is, uh, is, well, comes from Spain, no, in some sort of way. Uh, and I think some places like uh, maybe, yeah, like rural places, like in the center of Mexico, in Guanajuato, where I did the, the short film, still have a lot of uh, things that could be Andalusia. Uh, like they, they share, obviously, the the language, the, the ideas of romance or of uh, life in, in some ways. Uh, uh, I think uh, also that world, like the world of Agustina and a typical rural uh, life um, is changing a lot right now. No, uh, So it was very important to me to to find a, a character that still had time in in her hands and her face and that uh, belonged to to another reality and Mexico I think and that's uh, yeah like what I think you might be uh, were asking is it is a place of a lot of contrasts because I think it is a place of uh, that shares uh, realities of lots of times you can drive half an hour um, from the city and you'll be maybe in the mid uh, 20th century or in the if you drive to another place you may be in the uh, end of uh, the of this 19th century and maybe here in some places of the city you 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 definitely are in the 21st century no so it shares a lot of mexico i think shares a lot of times in the same uh in in the same regions like you can meet agustina and then suddenly with all of her rudimentary uh lifestyle uh, like with her sheep and uh, with her birds and with her routine and with her way of things, of of seeing life, and uh, suddenly uh, her uh, one of her granddaughters uh, comes with a cell phone, and uh, they have these like tablets for school. Everything uh, clashed together, no? So yeah, Mexico is a uh, I think it's a place where you have this contrast, no? Like, uh, really, really, it is like a chaotic reality of times. And that it also involves, uh, like, a lot of uh, psychological things happening, no? In the society. Like, uh, people who have a perspective like Agustina, which is, I think is a perspective which is more more than aged, timeless. Uh, Agustina, I think she hasn't uh, gotten old uh, because she keeps like a fresh uh, view of of the everyday. No, I think that's what makes her young because she keeps uh, seeing every day as a new opportunity or uh, to to do love, to do life. No. Um, uh, I think uh, maybe when you get old is when you start, uh, uh, repeating the same ideas 
but I think Agustina every day, even if she repeats her day, she tries new ideas or she she um, she does it from a fresh start, no? And about her loving um, to the like past loves she had, I think it is a love more like uh, more or more like not a, like a strange love. I think it is like a, a love um, that you can have. I don't know to. Uh, to a um, grandfather you had that it's gone, I think, uh, or, a, or a person that's no longer with you. It's a love, uh, it's a, maybe a romantic love, but it's, it's a, a love a little bit like a timeless one, no? Like, uh, or even it, it is a love that can't be defined uh, by reality but by your psychological reality no what lives in the mind and heart of agustina uh it does it doesn't matter if uh, she loves uh, a guy that's dead or been dead for a long time or he's alive and besides her no um i think that's like one of the things that defines yeah. her <clears throat> well, every, everyone keeps a feeling no, for somebody you loved in, and it's not here with us anymore and it's a beautiful one uh, yeah it was just maybe playing with the topics and that we talked to Ita Janssen uh, last month and and she was saying that, that, that the, the problem with the Europeans is that you don't remember what it's like having indigenous people still around and that, that's what that, that the beautiful gradient of ages and epochs and different yeah. ways well uh, it's great, Nicolas, talking to you. <laughs> I can see Borja, Fiona already in the waiting room. And I, yeah, I, I will have, uh, Nicolas, we will have to find, since you're also a pro such a prolific filmmaker, we need to find the excuse to, to chat more because I had so many yeah. questions about sound, about luminosity, yes. about yeah. ethnography, and you know, analog, and so many things. Analog filming. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, it's been an no, I would absolute love, pleasure. I would definitely love to to chat uh, and maybe uh, share some of my work with with you guys again uh, and with your audiences. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, that you took um, Agustina and Serranilla uh, to your or to to Europe and to Glasgow and Edinburgh. And uh, well, thank you and. Uh, Apparently, Glasgow and Edinburgh are not Europe anymore. Well, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Well, th that's what Nicolas was saying Let's about, Let's about timeless. No, it's about timeless. <laughs> Forget about political constructions and borders. It kind of it is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, Viking it's, and it's European. It sounds yeah. like a joke just to say it, but there's no. <laughs> It's great to meet you, Nicolas, and, and this is unseen in, a, in, a, in, in cinematic, in 14 years history, that we are on time on a live moon with our guest. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for giving us your time and for the film. Thank you. How lovely, Sandy. So nice speaking to you, Nicolas. Stay well. Thank you very much. A pleasure. To you. Bye-bye. Bye. So, yes, fantastic. Uh, Serranilla, by Nicolas, Gutierrez, Wenmar, Wenamar, and... Well, our next guest. Ben, can... Benmar, I think it's more like a German. Ben, 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 ben. We're both not very German, so let's not try. <laughs> so, shall we just go ahead and stay away and, and welcome uh, Borja sure. Soler, the director? Sure, sure. And she's not Borja Soler, she's Fiona. Hey, Fiona! <laughs> Borja! Hello. Hola. Hi. We found symmetry. Yes, yes, <laughs> for request. So, are we going to do this in, in English or in Spanish? <laughs> I, we, we, are, we are talking in English and Fiona translating to Spanish. Borja, eh, ¿quieres que las preguntas, que yo te ponga las preguntas en español o, o puedes entender las preguntas en inglés y contestar en español? Creo que puedo, puedo entenderlas y sí, creo que igual mejor ir directamente a las respuestas. 
Lo que pasa es que he tenido algún problema. Ahora, ahora os escucho bien, ¿eh? No sé si, ¿Eh? si os ha pasado igual. Sí, ha habido un glitch ahí, así que a ver si a ver, cómo, vale. a ver si, si fluye ahora, pero ha habido un momento de glitch. Let's hope that, that goes smoothly. No, bienvenido, Borja, gracias por estar hoy con nosotros. Bienvenido. Gracias, muchas gracias a vosotros. Por la Borja Soler, Borja, director puedo... de Mindanao. Sorry. Eh, director of Mindanao. Eh, very, very much. Eh, making fantastic work from Caballo Films. Eh, Writing films with Sorogoyen from Stockholm to Antidisturbios recently uh, and a week ago uh, with, with the Creme de la Creme no, in the ceremony of the Premios Goya of the Spanish Academy Awards with this film that we're going to talk today in the now. Uh, welcome. Uh, gracias por estar one, once again, Borja. Thanks. Thanks for the I think uh, Rafa has the first question, I think, for you. No, what you offer is um... I was going to offer you a un café descafeinado de máquina, pero. <risa> so, Yo me he traído mi vermouth como Marisol. Eh, bien. <risa> yes. Bien. Well, the first question, I mean, one thing that called my eye from very first time I, I, we watch Mindanao is is the choice of the main character, is Marisol. Is, is, and, and the, the fact that this, this film is, after all, a, a love film, it, how do you choose such an unlikable character to make an, a, a love film? Eh, bueno, eh, la verdad es que la historia de Mindanao viene de, de un proyecto que ahora mismo está un poco en stand-by, de un proyecto de largometraje. Eh, y en, en ese proceso de escribir en un largo y de conseguir financiación, que es un trabajo arduo y muy frustrante eh, muchas veces, eh, la cosa se quedó de este proyecto largo un poco parada y entonces decidimos, eh, ya que teníamos muy escrito a este personaje de Marisol, hacer algo eh, que nos acercara al tono de aquello que ya teníamos escrito y, pero que se, se centrara en una despedida. ¿no? Para mí era importante eh, que fuera rapi, rápido de, de pensar, rápido de escribir, rápido de producir y tuvimos esta idea como muy clara de las últimas horas de Marisol y lo que empieza siendo pues eso, la despedida de, o lo que parece ser la despedida de su de su séquito o de su grupo político, de compañeros, de compadres políticos más cercano, pero que realmente esconde otra cosa, ¿no? que es esta, esta despedida de este amor oculto eh, que me parecía que es el corazón del cortometraje y es lo que más me apetecía contar. The idea... Um, for uh, Mindanao comes from a project that's currently on standby and it's a feature length film. But as we went through the process of trying to make this feature length film and getting financed, we found it was quite hard and, and often quite a frustrating process. So we, well, I decided to stop the feature, but I had uh, this character of Marisol quite well developed. And so um, I decided to do something else with this character, and it was to focus on this farewell gathering. I wanted it to be quite a fast project, fast to make, fast to produce, and it centers on the final hours of uh, this character. She's saying goodbye to her team and her, uh, her political cronies, um, but in actual fact, it's really saying goodbye to this secret love And I thought this was kind of the heart of this project, and it was a story that I wanted to tell. Yeah, well, that, that's right. But also, as a spectator, what I have seen maybe four times Mindanao, twice live and twice before with Alberto. The, I, I, I like uh, Marisol. I, <laughs> as a corrupt, very old woman, I actually get to like her when I shouldn't. And, and you make that connection with her infancy. And, uh, and there's a, there a point when maybe somebody goes wrong. 
goes wrong, and then there's no way back. I don't know. And then this, this this song, this song by Bruno Lomas, which is not the same period. Bruno Lomas is a lot early, he's from the 60s. And, and he keeps saying, como ayer, like yesterday. But he, he goes in a special way about it. He goes, como ayer, como ayer, and hammers the como ayer, like if he was yesterday, uh, once and again and again. And I wonder if that is something as well important in the film, the, the point when you cannot go back to be like you were yesterday. And Marisol then drives all the way to this Guardia Civil arrest. And there's no options about it. Sí, eh, yo, yo, a ver, pasa algo con el personaje de Marisol que, que era también uno de los grandes eh, riesgos, hallazgos, complicaciones, ¿no? De cómo puedes empatizar, sobre todo en, en nuestro país, con un personaje así, con unas con un eco y con, y con una sombra tan clara en determinados personajes públicos, ¿no? Eh, y de alguna forma también, bueno, habíamos... No nos hemos documentado en, en ningún personaje especial, sino en, en, en muchos, en todos y en muchos, ¿no? Y, y de hecho nos hemos documentado, sobre todo escuchando sus conversaciones privadas, que muchas de ellas se han hecho públicas, y entonces era como, bueno, es que esta gente... Eh, podría ser mi, mi tía, podría ser mi padre, podría ser, o sea, hay, hay, había como una relación de, de la, me, me gustaba acercarme a la corrupción desde un punto de vista muy cercano, muy personal, muy de puertas para adentro, ¿no? No, no de una historia de, de política, de pasillos, ni de, gran, ni de grandes eh, corrupciones, ¿no? Y, y de grandes thrillers y de... Sino, sino desde un punto de vista muy íntimo, muy personal, con algo de lo que, de lo que el espectador y el público lo primero que tiene que hacer, ¿no? lo primero que hace es rechazar totalmente a este tipo de personajes, pero también plantearlo desde un punto de vista de, bueno, esta gente eh, es, es de carne y hueso y está mucho más cerca de nosotros de lo que podríamos pensar, ¿no? Estamos acostumbrados a verlos en los titulares de los periódicos, abriendo informativos, ¿no? Eh, y entonces ahí había una, había una relación muy incómoda para el espectador que me interesaba muchísimo. Me interesaba muchísimo poner al espectador en, en, en sintonía ¿no? con, con la cosa más íntima y que llegara a conectar eh, con alguien así eh, bueno, me parecía que, que, era, que era muy importante y al mismo tiempo cómo es, podría imaginar cómo estos personajes eh, podrían pensarse a, a ellos mismos antes de, de, de llegar a, 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 ten, a bueno, a hacer las cosas que hicieron a los minutos antes de entrar en la cárcel, ¿no? los minutos antes del escarnio público. Eh, de los que, del que son culpables, ¿eh? no, no quiero con esto limpiar su imagen, aunque pueda parecer, ¿no? me, me, hay, hay alguna crítica que me ha llegado, ¿no? que es que esa incomodidad es tan fuerte para el espectador que, que, no, que, que, que lucha con, 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 con empatizar con este tipo de, de, de personajes. Eh, pero bueno, también siendo fan de los sopranos, siendo fan de este tipo de... De, de ficciones ¿no? que nos acercan a seres totalmente despreciables desde un punto de vista familiar, creo que también alimentan, bueno, por lo menos para mí, un, un espíritu crítico que no solamente va de un lado muy claro, ¿no? sino que creo que también estas cosas te hacen pensar mucho, ¿no? de dónde venimos, quiénes somos. With the character of Marisol, uh, there were several complications. Um, how was I going to portray her and how was I going to make her someone you'd feel empathy for? After all, this character um, has echoes of people that we see in politics, uh, characters we see in politics. Um, we, we didn't base her on one particular character, but on many different characters. And the angle I wanted was to Almost listen in to private conversations because that way it makes her seem like she could be a relative, she could be my aunt, she could be my dad. 
I like the idea of getting close to corruption in that way, almost like a fly on the wall. I didn't want to look at it in terms of the great corridors of power, like the big thrillers do. I wanted it to be really intimate and personal. Um, because I knew the public would want to reject a character like her. And I thought it was um, interesting to show these people as actual skin and bone, to show that they're actually closer to us than we think they are. They're not necessarily the, the characters we see on TV. The discomfort of the viewer was something that really interested me. Um, the idea of looking at it quite intimately as a chance to maybe connect with, with someone like that. Um, I like to try and imagine how they think of themselves before going to jail, to jail and before they have this public reckoning, uh, because you know if, if they are actually guilty of um, you know, of misdemeanors. Uh, I think the discomfort of the viewer and that difficulty with empathizing uh, was really key for me. I'm a real fan of programs of shows like The Sopranos, where you get to be close to some horrible characters in a familiar set. And, and I think that approach is very... Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. And I and, and, and know and the corruption of the political class is a necessary vehicle. But what we love is that heart that Rafa was talking about, that almost in a... Uh, Erice sends that journey to an uh, imagined place, no? using the flash, using the Mindanao as, as you know, like the dream, like a dream place. Uh, in this case, obviously connecting with childhood, no. Um, but you know, we love that the use of those two metaphors or elements uh, in the story to connect to a very young uh, or the young Marisol. And how, and, how, sorry. Yeah, you go ahead, Raf, if, if you go on. No, I was going to ask you, is, is how, how was uh, being in the Goyas with this film? The, 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 the nomination, it was a surprise, and how was the experience? We lost Fiona. Was that, uh, Stop it. Oh, we, Fiona's I, back. I Fiona. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, Borja, perdón. Fiona, mi salvadora, además. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, pues, pues, pues la verdad es que bueno, lo recibimos con muchísima alegría es verdad que el recorrido del corto eh, desde que estrenamos en el Festival de Málaga ha sido muy, muy, muy importante eh, hemos estado en muchísimos festivales en España y hemos tenido muchos reconocimientos muchos premios, quiero decir que, que había una sensación de que, de que obviamente el corto estaba gustando pero claro, hasta que no escuchas tu nombre en la nominación, claro, no se, no se, no se hace real y, y la verdad es que fue una, fue una fiesta la celebración, la verdad. Muy bien. Well, it was a real joy. Um, the run that this film has had, for, uh, starting with its first showing in Málaga, um, it's then gone on to appear in lots of festivals, and it's uh, you know been a prize-winning short film, so I get the feeling that it is very much well liked. But really, until you you hear your name on that nomination, it's not real. But obviously, yeah, when that happened, it was a you know a, we had a great celebration. Yo de de hecho os iba a hacer una pregunta porque que viene un poco al caso de esto que estábamos hablando porque el el, el corto se ha visto mucho en España. Eh, pero fuera de España no, no, ha tenido, no, no ha tenido esa acogida en diversos festivales europeos donde bueno, hemos optado. Entonces, claro, me, 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 me interesa mucho cuál ha sido la, la recepción del corto allí, porque la verdad es que creo que ha sido como la, la, la primera vez que ha salido... Estuvo en Guadalajara, en, en el Festival de Guadalajara en México, pero fuera de, de, de zonas hispanohablantes, ¿no? no no hemos tenido bueno. ningún feedback, entonces... Bueno, deja, no sé si Fiona 
Oh, well, I don't know if he's... Yeah, for, the, for our English-speaking audience, let's translate that bit. <laughs> Although I feel Fiona is frozen. Sí. No, no, hold on a second. Fiona is... is, is oh, we got two Fionas. No. <laughs> Well, uh, there's a weak glitch with the connection here. But yeah, I, 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 I do the, the, the patch if you want, Raf. I, I go um, an undergrad in translation study. No, uh, you know, uh, you know. well, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, no, yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Have, is it just problems with me or are you all having problems? Yeah, I think it glitches a little bit with, with you, Fiona. But in case mm -hmm. you didn't pick up on, on what Borja was saying, Borja was just asking us. I love when filmmakers break that dialogue of us only asking and we keep this more conversation bit. And Borja was asking us how was the reaction of English audiences or Scottish audiences in this case. And I feel, Rafa, you, you can tell us a bit more. Uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh was slightly different, but very warm in both cases because the film has been in Guadalajara, Mexico, not so much in, in other countries. No, yes, yes, the, the, the reception was fantastic. The Mindanao went the second from the end. So, yes, basically, because the, 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 of the corruption and maybe the negative uh, things that we presume people know about it, it was in the head of the audience here they get to know about it later that there's something wrong obviously and she gets arrested but by that time the the ca uh, cafe de máquina descafeinado goes down incredibly well the the character <laughs> like how she starts with the, the drug use the the connection with her her partner pilar through this other young girl that is kind of hugging her kissing her the the song, the, the, the short was very well uh, received here and really everybody was talking about it after. Yeah, what, what I know is, I, I guess it's, it's in the script, Borja is obviously having two actresses like this, it's incredible, but it has those moments, you know, it's like, bang, it's like, it just works so well with audiences that there are two, three moments where just audience start to laugh out loud. And yeah. at the end, I think in both cases, in Glasgow and Edinburgh, it was like probably the warmest uploaded a very, very applauded film of the program, or one of them. <laughs> bueno, que bien. Sí, porque al final, claro, como da la sensación de que es una historia como tan nuestra, tan, tan mediterránea, eh, pues siempre estás ¿no? eh, interesado en cómo se va a recibir eh, una historia así fuera, ¿no? Uh -huh. There's, there's always, I must say, Borja, in our session, particularly in Edinburgh, there's an element of uh, Spanish diaspora that like to come to, to the events or to keep a link with, um, with Spanish culture or, or Latin American culture. And, and I'm sure those, you know, picked up more cultural nuances, no, and more elements of, obviously, of the film. Um, yes, 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 the audience was very, very diverse. The, and the, um, we were saying this before, the difference between Edinburgh and Glasgow can be any bigger. I mean, it's two different planets, two different crowds. crowds. But it went down very well across all the, across a very diverse audience. And, and yeah, the, the, the humor got so well. The character really rises such a loving feeling for her, when the, the way she is, the outrage of asking for a whiskey because there's no coffee and it's breakfast. And well, many other things. I and mean, who who is there? Is the Ministry of Equality? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are the same here. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of things that come across. The, the, the humor of the character, the the fun bits, come across here absolutely like a riot. Like everybody. Do you? Do you? Sorry, and you know, it's horrible to have just like a, only twenty minutes of of Borja, no? But but I wanted to ask. No, not sure if it's the last one, but, but to ask if, if the fact of being in a showcase, like being nominated to the Goya Awards, could be helpful or you feel should be helpful. I remember one film by Caballo Films as well, uh, no? uh, that was Madre, that was a short film that went, found the, the, the space no? after the success of the short film to be a feature film. We certainly hope so, but do you feel like you know, it will help to make the film? Because we, we want to see more of Marisol. 
Pues, pues yo espero que sí, espero que sí. Eh, creo que, que el recorrido del corto, como os decía antes, ha sido tan bueno que como mínimo hemos conseguido que gran parte de la, de la, de la industria española eh, y de las cadenas pues hayan, hayan visto el corto o por lo menos les hayan hablado de, del corto de Marisol. Entonces yo creo que eso ya simplemente ya nos espero que nos, que nos abra eh, muchas puertas para el futuro. O sea que sí, 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 estamos, quiero decir que al final es como una doble celebración, ¿no? O sea, estar nominados por el corto, que el corto, que el corto funcione por sí mismo, pero que también la recepción que me estáis diciendo a nosotros también la recibo por, por muchos otros lados, ¿no? Queremos saber más, queremos que nos cuentes de dónde viene este personaje, que cuál es la relación de Marisol y Amparo, porque cómo llegan hasta aquí, ¿no? que era también algo, bueno, en lo que pensamos mucho a la hora de escribir el corto, así que cruzamos dedos, sí. And we hope, I mean, suffice to say, we hope that Carmen matches Marisol also in the feature length. <laughs> Yo no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've I, I cut out again. Um, I, I, I caught that, yes, I hope so, and I hope that people want to know more about the relationship between uh, Marisol and Amparo to know the backstory of how they got to, to this point. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, the, question, um, the answer was coming from the question of, obviously, there was a feature that was turned into a short film just to make it, and it's, it's moved the, the project of the feature film forward in the sense that the, all the people relevant to the, fun, the funding of the film has heard, has watched, or has heard about Mindanao. And the, the fact that this is having a, a huge uh, uh, well run on the circuit, of the festival circuit. And as we were saying before, in different audiences, uh, they all enjoy the, the humor, the character, and they all want to see more about, about Marisol as we want to see more about Borja, but we, we, we swear, I mean, we, we are a bit patchy, Alberto, we have lost the knack of doing this fluid. It's, um, it's four months or three yeah, months without uh, gonna, doing it, you know, the two of us, so, you know, need to lost, rehearse a bit more. We lost it. We lost it. <laughs> Perdonad que os he perdido como en los últimos segundos. Solo estábamos diciendo cosas bonitas de, de Borja y de Mindanao. <risa> y de Amparo y de Marisol. Y de Amparo y de Marisol. Certainly we, we hope that there will be, uh, I think it's, the, the name of the project was Spanian or whichever name uh, gets uh, the feature length, the continuation of this story. And we hope to see Carmen Machi, because I've seen Carmen Machi doing a lot of great things. But I must confess that, you know, I'm hooked on Carmen Machi as Marisol. Uh, interpreting this character. Sí, sí, eso seguro ya está, está encantada, vamos, no, 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 no podría ser de otra manera. O sea, que, que sí, sí, sí. Ojalá Pero, vaya adelante. Esperamos, we, we certainly hope so. And, and again, Borja, it's always this mix of uh, being thankful and frustration of not uh, having more time to, to dig deep. Yes. But, That's, that's right. So I can see Sylvia coming in. I can see Fiona is, is having problems with the connection, or maybe I don't know. I don't think it's us because I can see you perfectly fine. No, uh, I think it's coming from uh, Fiona's so window. Let's say bye bye. I know Sylvia has very short time to, 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 to stick with us. It's great to see you. It's great to speak with you. Thank you very much for the short film. And we are looking forward to see this Spanish film when it comes out. Gracias a vosotros, ha sido un placer, es un placer además recibir esta, este calor desde, desde allí y nada, para la próxima, cuando, cuando queráis. Apuntado queda, Borja. Venga. Silache, ¿no? ¿Se dice? Silache. Slanche. 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 And thank you, Fiona. I'm sorry for the connection problems, but thank you very much. I'm sorry, sorry. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. Is there water? Is there water, Fiona? So, I'm telling you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Vodka. <laughs> Ciao. Sorry about Ciao, Borja. Bye, bye, bye. Ciao, Fiona. <laughs> bye, Fiona. Bye. I think we're going to jump very... Straight with Silvia. It's a very different film. 
very different tone, probably. Yes. Um, well, uh, yes, 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 it's working. Yeah, yeah. Well, good morning. Hola, Silvia. Welcome. Are you speaking English or in Spanish? Wait, uh, you as you prefer. For me, Spanish, it's always easier, but uh, as you prefer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's do it. Uh, um, but can, can we ask you in English and you do the answers in Spanish? And then we can translate. No, don't worry. I can say it in English. Don't worry. <laughs> If sure. it's best for you, it's better. Like, no problem. <laughs> it's, it's, um, you, you'll feel that everything is mixed because you, you, we have these Spanish accents, but yeah. the audience mostly is... <laughs> The audience probably is a, is a mixture, but it's mostly Scottish or English or British um, or English speaking. So we, we, we mix everything here, but nobody is in English. Perfect. Don't worry. Bien, Me, I'm bien. an expert in mixing. Like now that I live in, in Paris, in France, uh, I'm like mixing. I'm doing a lot of uh, partiche, as we say. <laughs> Every time that I speak, I'm like so much confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Qué bueno. Gra gracias por estar. Thanks for joining us today, Silvia. From Buenos Aires, if I'm not wrong. Uh, no, no right now I'm in Paris. Ah, back in Paris. Um, yes, I'm back in traveling. Paris. Yes. Great. <laughs> great, 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 great. Um, well, the first one, I guess we, we were asking Nicolás earlier, but is um, how you felt when, when, when you heard that your film was going to be in a program about love or in a Valentine's program. It's an alternative love and, and you know wider love uh you know showing all the, the all, all the cycles of love but how you felt when when you heard that the atura was going to be in a program about love well i was very happy actually because the, the film it's about a love story but it's not a as what you would say a conventional love story and i believe i wanted to talk in creatura about what it actually like to talk about these other things that are not the pretty things about being in a relationship, you know, about becoming obsessed with someone, about the things that hurt and what happens when you keep all to yourself and then which is the limit, you know, of uh, to where uh, to push, no? And uh, where, uh, which is the limit of love in a certain way, no? So, and how this love is also linked to our past, to the things that hurt since we were kids and in a way trying to trying to to have a relationship with all of the burden that we carry with ourselves you know that's that's a difficult task and in a way creatura it speaks about this so when i heard it was about love i i was really happy because it's like okay so they understood the short film <laughs> so no, 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 I was I really <laughs> we were discussing it the social if it was about love or it was about the, the, the desamor no not love Or a love break, a broken, broken heart, no. But I it, think it's a mix of all of them, like yes. all of the things that you've said. It's a mix about all of that. Yes, yes. And, and that, that was um, both in Glasgow last Saturday and this Friday past in Edinburgh. There were people who couldn't, uh, didn't get it, didn't get the film. So what, what is this is about. But there were others that couldn't stay still. That it got them so deeply. That they have to move away. And in Edinburgh, there was a person from the Asian queer society of the University of Edinburgh who was crying in a corner and being in comfort with her friends and that. Is this a reaction you're getting to your film everywhere, or was it only cinematic? I, I well, you know, uh, it's funny because also with my first film, uh, which is named Silvia, it's a feature. I also had like this kind of reactions, you know, either people, they become really upset with me and they get really mad or they really love it. And they, you know, and they write to me and they say beautiful things. And in a way, Criatura, because it's more abstract and it's not, my idea was not to make a narrative short film, but the narrative was more in a second line. And I wanted like more to generate a journey. So to create an experience. So It's, it's funny what you say, because yes, like most of the times, like I either get a very, like a reaction like this, I didn't understand what, the, what this was about, or actually it's like people saying that they really relate to this way of, of loving in a certain way, you know, that it's not the kind of love that, like, that you see in the love films in the cinema yes. or whatever. It's like the kind of love that some, that hurts, that it becomes obsessive. But yes, it's like, I've had this kind of reactions with this short film, especially. 
the, the, the film is, <clears throat> is really sensorial rather mm -hmm. than narrative. Uh, you, 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 you look to create this, this, um, these feelings and then you cross from what is a reality. Well, there's obviously a couple, there's a very young love, then it's not so long, so young, but then you have this, this kind of uh, dream scenes. The tree is such a symbol in cinema and you shoot it from underneath, then you watch it from the top, and then you start spinning it around, and mm -hmm. it goes to the girl that is handing you. So I, 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 when we were looking at the program about love, you always aim at that impossible love, the mm -hmm. utopian, utopic love. And is that what you are doing there? I mean, are you looking for that love that it cannot be had or? Well, um, in a certain way, I am. Uh, but at the same time, you know what you said about the forest and everything. Like what I wanted to talk about was, in a certain way, how the because the the forest is always the subconscious, and that's why the creature is conformed by a forest. It has leaves and it has like uh, branches, and uh, so in a certain way, I wanted to talk about how every time that you're with someone, you're actually with your own subconscious, with your own self and with your own past, your own story. That's why there's a small girl in the forest and she does this with her hand. It's like, and this girl, she's wounded. So in a certain way, I, I like, I wanted to talk about this. Um, uh, yes, that, I don't know if I explained. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's uh, it's about this. Like for me, the forest it was more mostly like the subconscious, the mind, and uh, so you have the two levels. You have the level of where you know the subconscious that feeds the creature in a certain way that is conformed by the subconscious, and you know it's like something like cyclical. And at the same time, she has reality where she she's with someone, and it's a toxic relationship. It's a relationship that hurts, and how that relationship in a certain way feeds these other worlds. So, mm -hmm. and these other worlds that take like a, more like a, a, like a role that it's like, you know, like you feel the thunder and you hear the thunder and that like, it's like this person, she, she has so much anger or sadness inside herself that in a way it's like the world is breaking, you know, like you, you have this force and you, you feel that a big storm is coming, you know, it's like a little bit like, like this, you know, like when you're broken hearted, you feel that the world is going to fall apart, you know? It's like this God that it's like, it's like a, yes, like godly kind of uh, feeling in a certain way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the other day I was watching here um, a film. Well, uh, what do we what do we see when we look at the sky? You know, this Georgian film. Um, and there was one moment where the protagonist, one of the protagonists is looking from the window. They, they, they're making a film, no? And, and, and you hear her mental voice saying, you know, we like, Will I find the image to express what I have inside? And, and mm. with your film, you know, one of the most attractive things is, is the power that you were mentioning. There is, there is hidden, is, you know, just sobrehumano, es un poder mm. absoluto. Um, but, but also this impossibility of putting some feelings, some emotions into words or maybe even into images. And there's this, uh, you know, this impossibility of feeling the grief of of someone and i don't know if when you started the project you know there was this how how will be the form will it be with these colors you know how, how will i give shape and images to this pain or mm. you know? well it was very intuitive uh, we were filming i mean i was writing as we were filming and the actresses they didn't know what we were going to film until the day before and i sent them like uh, the script that I wrote and like we were improvising a lot and um, and I was editing and then I felt like okay so now I have to go here and now I have to go there but it was very very intuitive that is something good when you're doing a very independent project because the project was a uh, auto gestionado like I mean a auto financiado it was so fine and so in a certain way I I did it with a friend of mine and I told her like do you want to do you want to film this? Do you want to do this with me? And she was like, okay, let's go. And these two actresses, like I spoke to them and I told them like, okay, I don't really know where we're going, but please trust me. So in a certain way, I knew where I didn't want to go. And I, and I had it clear, like the kind of things that I wanted to avoid. Um, but, uh, but I, it was very like, as I was feeling the short film, it was, 
like brotando in a certain way it was like taking form um but also like the image of uh shit is like the music of shit is sad and the creature in a certain way it's something that i had already thought about like many years ago uh my mom she passed away and i remember we had to go to this concert and we were going to listen to shit is sad together and and uh, i don't know i felt i remember like feeling so heartbroken and listening to this music and it's it was as if i could see everything red in a certain way and it's as as if i could see this creature taking a form you know so there were certain things that i that images that i already had in my mind and then it was like trying to put them together you know it was like uh, having like uh, different pieces and then saying like how can we find uh, how can i express what i want to express without falling into common places and then you know like uh, so it was a very very intuitive but i mean i had some things very clear but some others it was more it was very free so it was a very beautiful short film to to film especially because of this yes it's, it's, it is certainly very special and the decisions you take as director are all risky and, and they work incredibly well mm. one, one that really moves out of the comfort zone from the straight from, from the outset of the film is the the voice that you, you are with, you're watching a, a dialogue, but you're listening to a voice that is enough, and eventually they go out of sync, and people think there's an error on the projection or whatever, but it's not. And I, I would like to, to, to know more about the point of view that you have in this film, as Silvia Esteve, on, you are kind of witnessing this story, this relation between the two girls and the, and the dreams, but you, you keep yourself a bit away from it, and it's quite special. How, how do you get to that way of telling the story? Um, well, uh, the short film, it started also because at the time I was, I was in a very complex uh, relationship or in a very complex moment in terms of a, a personal relationship. And, um, and so basically I also felt like being divided in a certain way. And, um, and I started to realize that I, that my, the problems that I had with this other person or the things that hurt me the most were things that had to do with my own story, my own past, with the things that I still hadn't solved. And in a way, I was just repeating patterns, you know? Uh, it's, uh, I felt it like the Eterno Retorno, like I, from Nietzsche, and like uh, this thing, this story that c continues repeating itself over and over and over. Although some things change, but it's the same story over and over. And in each time, you're, I, I felt like I was, having a confrontation with myself with the things I, I didn't I couldn't solve so also one of the texts that uh that with which the short film starts um it's uh it's a text that I wrote some years ago and then all of a sudden I was like looking into these images and I felt like okay so it makes sense for this to be here and then this thing of them out of sync and and then all of a sudden she she's speaking with herself and this it's like it, it was more about trying to to reflect this this in a way uh revelation that i had no like uh, um if i don't solve what i have to solve in a certain way it will always i will always be confronting somebody else but it will be always a confrontation with myself so that's how i decided to build it i was like how do i create the mirror effect and also the fact that they were two girls, it was also easier for me to talk about this mirror effect, you know, like how they they would, one, a, one her partner was a reflection of her own self and the things that hurt. So it was more a little bit like this, but it, like, it, this were like ideas that I had in abstracts. And then all of a sudden I was like, okay, how do I put it here inside the short film? Uh, so, but uh, it was very intuitive. All of that process. Wow. Much. Wow. <clears throat> and it's, it's quite incredible, really, what mm -hmm. you do with all those resources, you know, with, with the use of color, red, but so many hyper aesthetic uh, decisions that you make, uh, you know, to kind of bridge. I don't know. I felt when Rafa told me that, you know, um, that this happened, that this reaction happened after watching the film, it was so special because I felt the same. There's like something very cryptic, cryptic. 
and powerful hidden here. Um, but you always have the fear that people won't connect to that thing. Um, and, and, you know, glad to hear that they did. I, mm-hmm. I, I know, Sylvia, that you also kind of being conscious of time. Um, I think we, you know, uh, no, but don't need... worry. We can, yeah? like, we can at least, like, like, don't worry. <laughs> I've managed. <Okay. laughs> cool. So, yeah, what, what you were saying about, uh, like, for me, I, I wanted to leave it like a very open short film, you know? I didn't want to put like this, like, that's why I didn't want it to be narrative, you know? Because um, I wanted it to be like for people to put the meaning that, like, I believe that every time that you watch a film, you're, and when it's a film that allows you to do this, you, you put your own being into the film. How you interpret the film, it talks about your own story and about who you are. So, and the things that, that you haven't solved and so on. So for instance, when a film makes you angry, I believe that's a very good response, you know, because it's it like te pone contra la espada y la pared, no? And like uh, in a certain way, it's like if you become upset with a film, it's because there's something about this film that that you're seeing in yourself and that you don't want to see. So yeah. with Criatura, it's something this is what I thought. I thought like I know that some people they will be mad at me because I'm not saying things uh, maybe clearly but uh, the idea was for people to put their own uh, su propia duración like their own story into the film and that's why some people they connect and because and some others don't like for instance i remember there was this short film in locarno that was screening after my short film and it's a it's a trip like you're you're inside a train and you have to stay inside this shot that it's inside a train for 20 minutes or even more. No, it's it's more because the short film, I think it's like 50 minutes. So you have to be inside a train like for 50 minutes. And uh, at first, like it started and I was like, OK, so so the, the shot is not changing. And I started to get anxious, you know, like mm-hmm. and then I realized like, OK, what well, the director, what he wants me to do is just to let go and to enjoy the ride in a certain way. So, and when I did let go, it was a beautiful experience, you know? It was very soothing, it was something. And sometimes there's some, like it. what happens with certain films, like sometimes people, they're scared of letting go <laughs> because we were very used to receiving like uh, information in a very like given way. So if that doesn't fit into that, sometimes they become like, but then if you do let go, you can enjoy the ride. And it, like it, with Creatura, it was not 50 minutes, but I wanted to create something like this, like uh, for people to enjoy the ride for at least 15 minutes. <laughs> but it's a very difficult ride <laughs> to enjoy also, <laughs> a painful one. So when you, when you get there, the, the, the result when you connect is more gratifying, is more, uh, you know, Hmm. After the pain you 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 have in the in the journey, when you get there, it's like such a such a massive reward. And what you were saying, you know, just we're so used to the codes, the codes of receiving messages, of understanding stories, of narrative arcs, that when people can connect to a film like Criatura and you know away from those codes, is is very special. Hmm. Yes, and I agree with you. The, those who were kind of lost on what was going on there, they, they, they seem to be having a happier or more confident staying <laughs> where <laughs> those were moving and we're, we're, we're halfway uh, transition and it was important as well well uh, we, we are we promise to the team today to stick to our times and that <laughs> again Sylvia we, we could be we would love to talk to you the whole day and we are looking forward to watch more more of your of your work I don't know if you want to tell us as to, to finish uh, what is your next project or what are you working on at the moment? I, I've I've finished another short film that is called a spiral. It's about um, it's about uh, well the um, a hypochondria like uh, like uh, and it's and it's about how everything relates to actually with home, you know, and the things that you lacked when being a child in a certain way. So it talks about this, and I'm also working 
Well, Criatura, it's uh, the starting point for a feature um, that I'm writing, that it's a fiction wow. feature. It's going to be my first fiction feature. So Criatura, it's more like in, it's more, it's, I mean, obviously the feature is going to be more narrative <laughs> because it's going to be longer. Um, but it was more like an experimentation for this, you know, because I've always done documentary film and, uh, and they were <laughs> like, okay, uh, I know that you want to do fiction, but we don't know how you film. Like, can you really do fiction? So I did Criatura also as a way of proving myself that I could, that it was something that I could really do. Although I, it was something that I wanted to do to film fiction, but I didn't know if I was going to be able to do so. So it was also to, to do an experimentation for the feature. And I'm also with another film, which I'm in the, in production, uh, which is a documentary that I've been working on for five years. And it's a documentary that is called Mylene and it was a very difficult project for me so I was going through a lot of pain because um, it's about uh, the prescription of abuse of sexual abuse in Argentina of child abuse so mm -hmm. it was a very difficult film to make so in a way for me Criatura it was also a way of putting all of that outside you know like I was I felt like I was yeah feeling so many difficult things you know when you're confronted with the cruelty of the world and its misery in a certain way then you know how how far away we are of reaching something fair and so on so i so I, that's why i did criatura to, to do a perch so it's also that's why the film is like like uh like going inside of hell and then the idea is for you to perch <laughs> i needed to perch <laughs> All of it. so yes i'm with many Luckily, I'm with many projects. Wow. We'll yeah. <laughs> heal it and personally looking forward to, to watch it all. <laughs> thank you. And thank you very much for the space also, for, for the conversation and everything. No, thank no, you. No, no, no. Our I... massive pleasure, Silvia. <laughs> okay, thank okay. you. Enjoy your day. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Stay well. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Okay, well, well, great, great, uh, Silvia. Oh, nice, Raf, nice. We done almost, almost on time. I forgot how much I enjoy these chats and how frustrating it is, exactly, to not extend, extend, you know, the conversation even more. Yes. Well, we, we, we are doing better. We don't go two and a half hours, we're moods. <laughs> Just a wee reminder, uh, the program we are talking about today, Another Love, Otra More is live in our channel. Just visit our website for all the details. You can watch it all day today, and then that will be it, or it will be over. Uh, you remind you as well, we run a, a pay when you can, um, sliding ticketing system, so don't, don't let money be uh, stop you from enjoying this amazing program of films. We remind you as well that we are back live and online in March with an over of our regular features in the in the calendar, Alberto, it's called... Mujeres, two guys talking about... No, uh, <laughs> Mujeres, <laughs> our, our, our regular uh, homage, I don't know, homage is one of the most exciting programs to put every year, uh, which is, you know, you know, trying to find absolute great films, radical, the challenge, uh, you know, traditional storytelling, and are made by women from Spain and Latin American countries. So that's going to be good. Things, we started doing it many years ago, wondering where all the women that populate uh, cinema schools went, that they, they didn't manage to sign projects. And it seems that it's, 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 it's a, a, a turning tide. Certainly still maybe not so much at the top of the budget, but certainly we had Carla Simon winning a uh, gold bear in Berlin and I, I, Alberto fall out of a, me a meeting with that technology. <laughs> we were in our regular meeting, no? And all of a sudden I was like, Shh, Rafa, shut up. They're going to announce the, the gold bear winner. Leave you in the back. <laughs> and then they say, Carla Simon Alcaraz, and everything fell, no? Every, Alberto disappeared. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, was a, it, 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 I personally felt so proud. I mean, I don't know Carla Simon yet. <laughs> we have the look for her, but certainly for the for the, 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 the kind of cinema that can be made in Spain, the kind of cinema a woman can make, the, the, the achievement, the achievement of a 
independent small production, which is a, it is a small production done in her in her native in her local village, uh, going all the way to a Berlinale and winning the the gold bear. That is an amazing achievement by all means. And, and, and it shows that something's changing, Rafa. And I, I guess when we started with Mujeres, it was about that time with the steel and and everything. And, and this was already brewing, no? These projects yeah. were already developing, yeah. but Celia Rico, Belen Funes, Pilar Palomero, Clara Ruquet, yeah. Carla yeah. Simón, yeah. Meriche. You could, yeah. you could go on, Nelly Reguera, you could go on and on. And but I'm so proud many, that... There's that many, many chel, colel, yeah. Yeah. In the Las Catalan Film Festival is another big film coming up duo. But we, there was another in Cannes, they, 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 they gave the, the Palm de Or no, to, to uh, Julie Ducorao for Titan. The Titan. And yes, it, it is, I hope, a uh, turning tide. But before women start doing bad commercial films, and they have every right to do so, watch our program in March of absolutely amazing out of was, films. Totally. Totally until until twenty three fifty nine p.m. No, until until the eleven until eleven fifty nine p.m. You can watch the films. Oh, just today, another glow. I was talking about mujeres from the fourth of March. But Rafa, that's it. Uh, yeah. Okay, we close it there. Yeah, it's no, just, it's I had this feeling yesterday, and I was so happy all by the sudden. One, you know, one thing we were talking about having just shown, I don't want to say support, we just show in films that we love, but the, the short films of Belen, of Pilar, of Mary, of everyone, no? Of, uh, you know, before they went on to win the Goyas and everything. And it's so nice to see that there's this generation. And even more, I was thinking or dreaming all by the sudden that I was a 65 or 70 year old guy, you know, in the last bit of my life, maybe or something. And these women, say Celia Rico, has done 12 films, Pilar, 15 films, Carla Simon, 20 films, you know. And this has changed. It's completely normal. They made so many films. They had a long career. They gave us so many great movies. And I was moved by the feeling of, of you know, I'm hoping that will be the case. All of them will give us 15, 20 films. Some will be yes. fantastic, some good, some not so good. Bring it on. But... Yeah. The feeling that there's this generation there are, coming. There are good, more films. Good cinema coming. There are more films being made that anyone can watch. But it's, it's great that there is a balance on the on gender production in the in the film industry. And then I'm looking forward to watching lots more. <laughs> but, and with this thought. <laughs> this thought. Have a great Sunday. Thank you for watching. If you are watching on Sunday or you're watching any other day. And yes, we'll see you in March. Thank you very much. Cheers. Lovely to talk to you, Rafa. Cheerio, you too, mate. Ciao, ciao. Ciao Cheers. a todos. Bye. Bye-bye.